good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Rashad Shashakli, and I'm the supervisor for Ping Pong Propulsion, uh, 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 the, the, the event Ping Pong Propulsion. So uh, it's probably difficult to figure out who's new and who's not, but I'm, I'm, uh, I'll assume 50-50 because there's always, uh, you know, somewhere around there. Um, this, uh, in my opinion, is the most fun event, but I'm a little prejudiced, I suppose. Um, before I begin, uh, during the, the time between now and, and the main event in May, you might want to go on to the uh, Macomb uh, SO.org website uh, to check for uh, a copy of the, the, the current rules. Uh, and also, you can post questions there, which will get forwarded to me. I'll respond, and then we post all of the questions and their corresponding answers uh, on that same website for everybody to see if, if they have questions. Um, that being said, um, the uh, the all of the the, the teams are, are typically one or two students uh, tops and uh, the uh, objective is to design uh, and construct a device which will shoot ping pong balls uh, one at a time uh, towards a target at a prescribed distance um, <clears throat> The uh, hopefully the parents, while they can assist, uh, hopefully they'll leave a lot of the uh, idea making and perhaps some of the construction to the students, which is kind of where more of the fun is. Um, I think dads like to get involved maybe more uh, because it's easy to do, but hopefully the kids will do most of the most of the work. Um, the uh, also safety goggles are a must. Uh, you can, when you when you bring your device in at, and check it in at the before the event, you don't have to have the goggles checked in with the device if you're using them for another event. But when they actually come to participate, they have to wear safety goggles or they won't be allowed to participate. Uh, and we try to stress that uh, every year. Um, anyway, the actual device that you're going to build, there are no particular um, parameters that we we have uh, as in past years you can make it out of pretty much anything wood plastic metal uh, combination of any of those uh, and the and the launching mechanism itself the whatever it is that drives the ping pong ball uh, towards the target is up to you uh, to, to, to figure out um, the only thing we ask is you don't use anything hazardous like uh, uh, gasoline or lead acid batteries from cars, uh, and there will be no plugs available. So it has to, uh, the device has to be self-contained when it's on the floor, uh, because not everybody would have access to like outlets or things like that. Um, the uh, um, you can load them uh, the the ping pong balls of which there are 15 uh, individually or all together. Uh, on the device, uh, and um, uh, the the device itself has to sit on some sort of either a rubber mat, rubber pads, or felt pads, or something, so that we don't scratch the floors. Um, the floors that typically are, we're we're uh, working on are either gym floors with a nice varnish finish, or or you know uh, a vinyl floor, depending on the location that the event is actually held at. We have had damage before from screw, uh, either screws or bits and pieces on the devices. So we do the, the pad or, or a blanket issue to, to mitigate any damage to the property. Um, and we will be looking for that when they uh, impound, the, uh, impound the device. Um, also, the devices have to be marked with the team name and team number. So you need to have both placed on the, devi the device itself. Um, and uh, when you check in, you're also going to have a bag of 15 ping pong balls. You're also going to have uh, uh, a data sheet, uh, which is going to your, uh, which is the, the uh, participants way of recording uh, all of the 
the necessary adjustments to the device that they need to hit specific, the specific distances. And um, uh, I'll get to the distance, uh, the distances in a minute. Um, and with regard to the ping pong balls themselves, uh, you're going to have 15, as I said, 40 millimeter ping pong balls. And uh, as a caveat, if you create a device where the ping pong ball is going to be pushed down a tube and be fired like, similar to like a gun or something like that, make sure that the ping pong ball actually fits into the, the barrel. We had an issue the first year where the diameter of the ping pong ball on the outside was just enough to prevent the ping pong ball from actually leaving the barrel. Uh, apparently the thickness of the material when they make the ping pong ball varies. Uh, so be, be uh, kind of cognizant of that when you're buying the bits and pieces that you need to assemble the device. Uh, as I said, you have 15, ball, uh, 15 regulation ping pong balls. 10 of them will be white. F four of them will be orange or, uh, you know, another color. And the, the, the uh, 15th ball will be, uh, for all for talking purposes, orange with a big stripe around the middle to distinguish it. The reason for that is the white balls are the, how shall we say, at least valuable. Uh, the, red, the orange balls, the colored balls are valued a little higher and the colored ball with a stripe would be the highest, your highest value asset, your highest value ball. Um, you're gonna be shooting, uh, you're, you're also gonna be writing the team number on each of the ping pong balls in, you know, on two sides of the ball. That makes it easier for us to score, uh, uh, to make it faster for us to score so we can get the teams on and off a lot quicker. Um, and you'll see that information in the rules as well. Um, also underlying the numbers because sometimes it's difficult for us to distinguish between sixes and nines and and things like that so they'll be under underlying the numbers as well um, at impound uh, which is when you come in before the event actually starts you're going to check your device in uh, in the morning and there's a prescribed time period that'll be on the schedule you want to make sure you're on time because uh, for, for one, when you impound your device, you get points for having it impounded on time. If you're late, uh, then you get uh, negative points, which might impact your final score, which means you may, you know, might affect whether you meddle or not. So be on time for impound. We're going to ask to see your actual device, uh, a bag full of the, the 15 ping pong balls and 15 only. Um, and we're going to check to make sure you have the right, you know, 10 white, four, four colored and four color, uh, one colored with a stripe. Uh, also, you're going to have two copies of the data sheet, which is where you record what settings you need to do to your device uh, to allow your device to hit whatever target uh, distance that we give you the morning of the, of the uh, competition. Uh, the only time the, the kids are going to know that distance is when they actually show up to shoot uh, to try and keep it as uh, uh, local to the groups that are shooting. You're going to be shooting eight teams at a time, preferably, uh, if, we, if we have enough teams to do that. We like to have a lot of chaos with the balls flying everywhere. Uh, but you want the, the ping pong ball bag, the device itself, the data sheets, to all have your team name and team number. One of the data sheets stays with us because we use the data sheets uh, in the event of a tie uh, to break numerical ties when we, uh, if we can't break them that way. Um, and then anything you need to uh, correct the device, control the device, uh, fix the device, whatever you need to make your shoot successful gets all impounded at the same time. Um, and then you go on your way, then you, it's basically first come, first serve when the when the Science Olympiad starts and the groups start showing up for the competition, for, for our particular event. Um, let's see, the practice log can be pretty much any format, um, but the more information, the better. You're gonna obviously 
Uh, for example, uh, in past years, we told them they had to make it out of wood. And we, uh, if, if it was a barrel type, we might tell them, okay, what kind of, uh, with a rubber band, we might say, okay, what type of rubber band are you using for this setting? What angle? Uh, how long are you stretching the rubber band? All of these are things that you can use to delineate on your data sheets. Uh, that when the student is given a distance, they can say, oh, at this distance, I set the rubber band this way or the angle of the machine that way to get that distance. And you know, after practicing and recording the, those, those, that information, what settings work and what settings don't work. Uh, you'll also find that as you are figuring these distances and, and, and uh, um, settings out, anything that doesn't hit the distances that you're allowed to shoot that, that, that you may be shooting to you just ignore those and you only record the the information that works for the specific distances um, the distances themselves will vary from four meters to eight meters in half meter increments so we could tell you the morning of the event your distance to shoot uh, for all the teams and it'll be the same for all the teams let's say is six and a half meters so with all the data they've collected, they'll know at six and a half meters, I can set my machine up this way or that way, and I'll pretty much hit the target all the time. Uh, so that's why that information is important, but you'll only know that the day you, uh, once you uh, come in for impound. Actually, when you actually come in to shoot is when we'll tell you the actual distance. Um, the target is going to be a swimming, uh, basically a, a, a an inflatable wading pool uh, with a five gallon plastic pail in the middle. The plastic pail uh, is the main, the, the best target to hit. It is, it is a higher value to hit the, the, the bucket that's in the pool. It's a slightly lower value uh, to hit the, the, swim, the swimming pool around the bucket. And uh, I, I believe it's nine nine points and 25 points. So if you hit the bucket, uh, uh, you get 25 times one for if, if a white ball goes in, 25 times, um, I'd have to look. The, the higher value balls, it, basically they have a multiplier. So the, the colored balls that, that go into the bucket will, will score higher than say a white ball. Uh, if you hit the pool, then it'll be multiplied by the, 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 the target value, the nine, it'll be nine points times uh, whichever, whichever ball goes in. Uh, and we'll take care of all that because we count by color and by uh, whether it's the strike ball, how many each team got, and all of the scoring takes place after. So we won't be able to give you your actual score uh, uh, until, you know, until the computers in the back room, score it all out. So, unlike other events, you may not know how you how do you how you came out. Um, the uh, let's see, what else do we have? You have people waiting in the waiting room. Oh, in the. Uh, um, I don't see anyone in the waiting room right now. Waiting to come in, oh. or waiting to ask a question, or. Oh, I just got an alert. <clears throat> yeah, on my end, it shows that everybody has been let into the meeting, but if you know somebody that hasn't, then let me know and I can try to see if I can let them in. Oh, is there a limit or? No, there's no limit. Okay. Um, well, let's see, where was I? Okay, so the... Uh, any, any ball that hits any part of those targets, either the, the bucket or the pool, will be scored. Anything that either bounces in or and, and then bounces out hits the floor. Once it's on the, the gym floor or the, the, the floor of the room around, those, ball, those ping pong balls don't count. They're basically dead balls. Um, so only the, only the balls that go fall into the pool or the bucket count towards your score. Um, and uh, that's 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 what the, anything in that pool, the, the pool in the bucket is what we use to determine your score. Um, once the shoot is finished, 
uh, the kids will be instructed to remove their device from the floor and pick up any of their balls uh, off, off the main floor and get them off the floor uh, and put them with, back in impound with their device while we score that group of, of students. Um, Just uh, to interrupt really quick, I'm not sure. Are you able to see the chat box? Um, do, 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 Otherwise, do. I can read you the questions coming from uh, the chat. Yeah, why don't you read me the question? Oh, I can see it. Uh, yeah, I see the, the element there. Let me see if it pops up here. Yeah, if not, I can read them. Okay. Uh, that's better. So we have a bunch of questions. Can a link to the website be provided in the chat? Uh, is that I something? Will put, I will put, put that, that in up? right now. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, uh, let's see. Bouncing the ball is uh, in. Is it allowed or not allowed? When you say bouncing the ball, you mean once the with the device you shoot it if it bounces off the floor and then into the pool or the bucket? Yes, it is. Doesn't matter if it's all air, if it bounces once or twice, if it gets knocked in by another ball, if it gets into the pool or the bucket, it scores. Um, let's see. Uh, yes, all the documents and recordings from today's. Da -da -da -da. Okay. Oh, there's only three or four questions here, then, right? Okay. Um, the distances keep scrolling up in the chat. Please. Yeah, there's a couple at a top. Oh. I'll read them off. It says, what is the range okay. of distances that the ball okay. are expected to travel? OK, the range, that's what I was just about to get to, is anywhere from four meters to eight meters in half meter increments. So I could tell you the day of the shoot, uh, you're shooting, you're t all the teams are shooting at four and a half, four meters, five, five and a half, all the way to eight. And just to be clear, we measure everything in meters in this event, not feet and inches. We've had that question before, and people did their data sheets that way. So they had no idea when I told them, say, six and a half meters, what to do, because they'd done all of their measuring uh, in feet and inches. So it behooves you to, to convert or, or to, to have it, uh, if you have a tape measure that, that, that reads in meters, would be the easiest way um, to, to do your practice uh, shooting uh, between now and May. Um, so another that's... Question. Um, another question was, can the device be handheld? If so, does it need a soft bottom? Uh, if it's handheld, it probably does not need a soft bottom because it's not going to be sitting on the floor. Uh, and yes, handheld. We did have a couple of devices in past years that were handheld. There's nothing in the rules that preclude it um, because we basically, what, uh, how's the word? Um, the, uh, the device, it, there are no material or size restrictions for the launcher. We don't tell you whether it should sit on the floor, be handheld, uh, be on wheels, be on a table, but anything that touches the floor should have some sort of uh, way to 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 mitigate scratching of the floor either a rubber pad rubber feet uh felt something like that um let's see uh anything else are the ping pong balls provided no you 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 can purchase i believe you can purchase the the ping pong balls uh, at the uh, the district events but I think you can also go out and purchase your own. Um, if you purchase your own, obviously, uh, whatever the device you're building, you, you yourself can make sure that uh, uh, they actually work with the device that you're constructing. Uh, some people use some sort of a net to sling the, the ball. Some people throw them down the barrel of a piece of pipe, either plastic or uh, metal or whatever, uh, however they choose to build the device. Um, I think in one year we did see uh, what they call a trebuchet or, or the old style, uh, like a, a slingshot, if you will, which uh, it, it was uh, the, the two we saw actually worked quite well. <coughs> but uh, th this way, at least you have control over the ping pong balls, but uh, I can't imagine they cost too, too much to, to purchase. Um, let me think. 
think here. Uh, oh, when they when they arrive and we we assign each of the teams a position around the target uh, that's in the middle of say the gym, uh, there will be two lines uh, on the floor. One the the inner line, uh, the line closest to the target, will be the will be set at the predetermined distance that I set up the night before, and then the second line will be approximately two meters back, uh, room permitting. Uh, that's just the, the, that second line is where everybody sets up, just they drop their device and their bodies and wait for, for me to tell them, okay, it's time to shoot, ready, set, go. On go, they move their device up to the inner line uh, and they can start setting up, uh, setting up for the distance they've been told and start shooting. Uh, the, the time they have to shoot from the time I say go is four minutes, which for 15 ping pong balls uh, is a lot of time. Uh, if they take their time and remember to breathe, they'll be fine. They typically won't run out of time to shoot the ball. Uh, and during that to shoot period, they cannot have any part of the device, uh, their data sheets, their bodies, uh, or anything else uh, closer to the target than that line. Um, and then they just shoot uh, at their own discretion. And then uh, with about a minute to go, I usually give them a warning that there's a minute to go. And then at the end of four minutes, I tell everybody to stop shooting and they just, the, no more balls are allowed uh, uh, being pushed to the target. Uh, that's when they'll be told to move their equipment off, off back to the side and impound while we pick up the balls and score by, by their team numbers. Um, let's see, scoring, typically, the, uh, as I said, the, the, the balls that hit the bucket will be scored higher than the balls that hit the, the pool. Uh, and our score sheets reflect which balls and what type of ball hit what target. Uh, and we take care of that. They don't have to worry about it. Uh, I do ask that at the end of the scoring, when we tell them it's done, they can come and pick up their 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 remaining balls that we've used to score. Uh, otherwise, we're going to end up with a big pile of balls with a bunch of numbers on it that we're not going to do anything with, but either possibly throw them away. Uh, let's see. Uh, we have a couple of questions here. Usually, the head coach will be will. Yeah, play. that was just relating to the kit, but. So one oh. of the questions was, can the device be moved back from the starting line to allow for adjustment, or does yes. the device have to be on the line? Um, well, most of the time, I mean, the idea uh, is that if you're on the line and it's a prescribed distance, then you know for sure that you're shooting for that distance. However, having said that, there's nothing that says you can't pull your device way back if, if it suits you. If you've been practicing that way, then your data will still work as long as you are always shooting from the, the same distance back when you practice as you do on the day of the event. So uh, uh, the, the short answer is yes, it can be pulled back from the line. Uh, there's no there's no problem there. Uh, I see one, the pool. The pool is uh, roughly, uh, where's the dimension here? I just, I just had that. Ah, it's approximately 49 in, uh, inches inside, 58 inches outside, and about 13 inches tall. And the five-gallon bucket is about 12 inches in diameter and about 14 and a half, uh, 15 inches tall. The pool is inflated, and we also have a, a little bit of a foam pad in the bottom of the pool, uh, which kind of deadens the balls so there's, they're less likely to bounce out. Uh, but uh, sometimes they still bounce out if they get hit by another ball. Um, you know, it's just kind of, that's part of the, I guess, the charm of the event. <laughs> we just count what's left in the two targets. Um, let's see, the distance from the pool to the launch line. That will That will be determined by me the day of the event. So depending on whether I've had my coffee, I may tell you, well, we're, this year we're going to shoot at eight meters or four meters or six and a half meters. But any half meter increment uh, between four and eight, 
uh, are any of the possibilities. So you have to kind of practice for each of those uh, meter, full meter and half meter increments between four and eight meters. Uh, when do we find out what our team numbers are? When you register, typically, I think that's when you find out. Uh, the event is timed uh, from start to uh, asking you to get uh, the teams to get their devices to sit in the eight prescribed locations on the floor to when I tell them go four minutes to shoot and then we do our, our scoring. Uh, I would say probably 20 minutes, although I think they've given us 30 minutes uh, for each round uh, for each group of students. So there's more than enough time to shoot. So to the coaches out there, I just stress to your, your, your team players, take your time, uh, you know, so breathe, think about what you're doing. And, you know, the idea is to have fun uh, and, and be accurate. So uh, it's it better that they take their time and think about what they're doing. Um, let's see, what else do we have? If target is at four meter, is that the distance from the middle? Yeah. The, the target, the, the distance is always measured from the inner line to the center line of the bucket, which is at the center line also of the pool. Uh, OK, so the team numbers are posted. Again, remember to put your team number uh, on the balls uh, and your team name and number on the bag with the balls, the data sheets, and the devices themselves. Um, let me think. Scoring, 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 scoring. OK, so the center target is for 25 points. So if you have a white ball, um, uh, let's see. But white balls have no multiplier. So, so you would get 25 points if you hit the pail for each white ball, of which there are 10. If you got an orange ball in the bucket, it would be worth three times 25 for each orange ball in the bucket. And if it was the one with the stripe, um, it, the multiplier goes up again. Um, let's see. Oh, oh uh, by, by turning in your practice logs or your data sheets, by the way, that adds 50 points to your overall score. So it's important that you do turn in the data sheet. Because if we if we have a tie uh, between teams, we will use the data sheets as a uh, more subjective way uh, to break the numerical ties that we can't break. And believe it or not, the first year we did this, we had 10 balls, had two or three ties. Uh, the second year we said, OK, we're going to make 15 balls. We actually had more ties with 15 balls than we did with 10. So it will happen. There will be ties. And if we can break the tie with the data sheet, the person with the nicer data sheet that's more thoughtfully put together and organized will probably win if somebody, say, doesn't turn in a, a data sheet. That would, that you know, so that might kick somebody out of the running if they don't have one. Um, basically, the greatest number of points wins or, or determines the winner. Um, let's see. Teams which, oh yes, if, if you impound after the deadline, you lose 20 points to your score. And if the super, if we determine that the device is somehow dangerous, we may not let you shoot. So uh, that's one of the reasons we, we actually do goggles. It's not so much because of ping pong balls, but we have seen devices where something let go and literally flew across the gymnasium and could potentially have hit one of the other competitors on the other side of the target. So uh, again, I stress the need for goggles. Um, let's see, I think that's pretty much it. So if there, basically I'd like to simply ask whatever questions you have and there are no silly questions. So ask away. I have a question. My sure. name is Tom and you were talking about the safety goggle and, and the safety uh, procedures, uh, yes. like springs, springs, locking mechanisms, cylinders, mm -hmm. trigger devices. Right. Should those be covered with plexiglass or? 
Well, we we've Does never really we've no it's there's nothing in the rules about how the device goes together but we obviously if, if somebody was to say well i've got a gas powered whatever that we're gonna i said no you're not going to have gas or gasoline yeah. because that's obviously dangerous um if you had something that was battery actuated okay uh in the past when they did it they used that we i think the previous years we used uh, elastomeric as the driver for the ping pong ball that included bungee cords uh, uh, inner tubes rubber bands of all kinds of sizes and sorts and they were not protected they were just part of the device okay um, so no you don't necessarily have to um, unless it looks right possible. yeah I mean if there's something yeah. obvious we, as I said, we we did have one or two devices where literally the barrel came free and, you know, this three foot piece of tu uh, plastic tubing went, you know, 50 feet across the gymnasium, which was one of the reasons that we kind of insist on, on uh, goggles, uh, not so much the ping pong balls because they're pretty low energy. Are we talking goggles or are we talking like safety glasses? Safety glasses or goggles. We're, we just want some sort of eye protection. And typically we ask that it's uh, if you wear uh, glasses like I do, that I wear goggles or safety goggles over top of that. Okay. That way you're not damaging, uh, you know, somebody might have a $400 pair of glasses. You don't want them damaged. So typically it's an addition. If you wear glasses, it's an addition to the glasses which I know is annoying because I did a lot of field work in the past and okay. I had to wear safety goggles over my glasses and I despised it, but those are, that, that is one of the rules. Uh, and somebody asked Google uh, goggles are required. Yes. Um, let's see. Any, what is the subject to Created the main event. Is there just one round of 15 balls? Yes. When I say go, you have basically four minutes to set up and fire uh, your 15, all 15 balls. You can fire them in any order you want. You can do the white balls first. You can, which is what I would normally recommend, although I don't tell you how to do it. The only reason I say that is the first two, you want to use your maybe your lower value balls to make sure that your machine is actually hitting the distance that you have already kind of predetermined that it will do at that whatever particular setting. You might not want to use your, your highest value ball first and then find out your, your, you set your machine up wrong. Uh, oh, any, any, um, Anytime you have a, let, let's say your, your device misfires um, and if, uh, you know, you didn't intend to fire it, it, it does. If it crosses the line, uh, sorry, that ball is dead. If, however, when it misfires, it stays behind the line, the firing line, you can pick that ball up and shoot it again. And that has happened. I've seen people actually spill their balls on the floor by accident because they're excited and they're not paying attention and half their balls cross the line and say well i'm sorry but those balls over there you can't touch but the ones that are still behind the line you can pick them all up and start shooting those so it's it's very character you know it's important that they keep control of their device and, and the balls and everything else and kind of know what's going on around them um let's see if team name the name of the school, yes, typically it is. Um, in what ways are the logs used subjectively? Okay, well, you, you get 50 points for, for turning your log book in. Um, but if there's a numerical tie that we cannot break, then we'll look at the quality of the data sheet as a way to break the tie. So if somebody has a, a better organized or uh, okay. uh, data sheet than someone who just scribbled it on a napkin and say taped it to the device, if somebody to, to use a really big, let's say somebody presents a spreadsheet that says, okay, at this distance, 
at this setting with this tension, uh, I hit this target. And, and they do that for each, uh, each setting and each distance. That would be something more organized than say three or four notations on a napkin. So the guy who the, the team that presented that that uh, more organized um, uh, data sheet would probably win that that uh, that would break the tie in their favor. That's why just to, just to add to that, that I think uh, I had asked that question on there. But so you're looking not mm -hmm. only for like the organization of it, but then is there also like the value of how much work they put into it? Uh, um, how many sheets they've added, et cetera, et cetera. Well, not so much how many sheets, but obviously, if it, it, the more organized it is, and the more the the if it, it if it shows how that they're they've actually thought about, they understand how these things affect their distance. For example, okay, it shows that they've been thinking and that they've been able to organize it and quantify it. That makes a, sense. You know, okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Thank you. We're not looking necessarily for a book uh, or, or, or uh, the other thing is, is a journal. You know, we built the thing this way and we did this. It's, it's more to organize the how did you get this machine or what settings do you need to do to the machine to hit that target? And they may find there's one or two or even three ways to set the machine, uh, either more tension or more attitude or more something to get the to get whatever distance that they've pr been prescribed to shoot to. So uh, it's just a way of uh, showing that they, they kind of understand maybe the effects of all that quantified data. Uh, let's see, what other questions do we have here? Team, the team name is generally the school name, yes. Uh, main event, logs. A sample data sheet. That data sheets can be made up pretty much. I've seen all kinds of things, uh, multiple sheets. I've seen some that are maybe one or two or even one sheet with just some real basic, you know, if there's, we've got four to eight, so that's uh, five times two. So you got, you could have uh, enough data on one sheet, you know, to set up your machines, uh, or they could do it by uh, multiple sheets. It all depends on how how many parameters they have and, and what what the design of the device is, quite frankly. Um, just to use an example, if if you did it in past years where we had like a tube and you raised the angle of this tube up to give it a little bit more height so it would drop down, straight down, as opposed to coming in at an angle and bouncing. Uh, the angle of the machine might be one of those parameters. Uh, the amount of tension or the distance back that you pulled the rubber band, which is some of the ways they use to drive the ping pong ball. Uh, that distance you pull it back uh, would be another parameter. Uh, the, obviously, the distance to the target is a parameter. Um, so again, but again, it depends on how you build the device too. Um, the height from the floor. If it's a handheld device, you're three or four feet off the floor. That might, uh, you know, it may be that somebody stands there and squats down for one distance, but they stand straight up and the device is higher for another distance. You know, I, they're all possibilities. We've, we've pretty much kind of left the, the, the execution to the students, the teams. So uh, let's see, any other if the distance to the target is for me, yeah, we got that question done. There's some more questions if you scroll down at the end. Okay. Uh, let's see. Are coaches allowed to assist? Um, typically, we discourage coaching the day of the event. It, to me, it's kind of like the SATs when you're in school. You've been studying all year. You know your device. You've been practicing. Once they're on the floor, set up, ready to shoot, let the kids do their thing. The coaches and the parents can watch and cheer on the sideline. And the more noise, quite frankly, the better. I think it's nice to cheer your teams on. But we prefer, uh, we kind of don't want them to coach from the side. We want them to, to kind of get out there on their own and do their thing. 
let's see. I have three team members on my teams. Does each team member shoot a ball? Um, let, typically, the rules say one to two on the team. Uh, let me get back to you on that one and see if that uh, might elicit a change to the rules or we, you know, we'll respond to that. So three team members, yes or no. I mean, even with two, we could say you could swap each, each shoot, but th right now it's one to two, I think was typically, if you have three, um, is that going to be, uh, are, are there more than one team that has three members on their team? That I don't know, but that's a question I will ask and I'll put a response on the website for you. Uh, alternating shooting. Okay. Okay. And that was from Brad. What, what school, what school are you with, uh, Brad? Collins Elementary. Collins? Yes. Okay. My niece Isabel is on the, on my team on our team as well. Okay, all right. Let me let me uh, let me find out, uh, and I will put a response on the website for that. Okay, because yeah, I don't know if each one got to shoot like five balls each, or if oh. one person shoots them all, or how. Right. That well, works. Yeah, it's you know, uh, irrespective of whether we can have three on the team, if it was still one or if if it was more than one up to two, uh, yes, you could alternate shots you could have one guy do five someone else do uh five and then you split the other ones two and three however you want to do it i've seen some teams kind of share alternate between making sure the the device stays behind the line and stays you know still while the other guy pulls the trigger you know or mm -hmm. one guy loads and, and one person loads and the other person pulls the trigger and then they switch Right, because you know, one of Izzy's teachers sent home a red folder with three kids' names and um, phone numbers on it. So that's okay. why I, I didn't know if how that still works when it says one to two students. Exactly. Well, that's why I'm going to find out uh, if a clarification needs to be made or 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 what. But let me let me dig into that and talk to the powers that be. Will do. Thank you. Okay. No problem. I know there were uh, in the past there were A teams and B teams. And typically, it was only the A teams that would shoot. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, let me let me look into this one. Okay, thank you again. You're welcome. Uh, let's see. Uh, what's the Facebook? William Thomas K. The glasses. That's no longer. Let's see. The missing questions. They seem to skip multiple ones. Here. Yeah, I can go through and make sure that yeah. we get all the questions because they might okay. be out of order. Yeah. Um, one question is: Is there only one distance for the entire event, or does the distance change throughout the launching or throughout the event? No. Nope. Uh, each uh, of if there are 80 teams, for example, if there are 80 teams, all 80 teams will shoot the exact same distance the day of the main event. Now, at the district events, I may give you a different distance just because, right? I mean, but they'll all be given that same that distance. But uh, during the actual shoot, all of the teams will shoot only one distance. And then is there a height limit when the ball is shot from the device to the bucket? Height limit, you mean in terms of how high you can make the ball go? I think it's in terms of how high they're shooting from, especially if it's a handheld device, but please correct me if I'm wrong, if no. that's your question. Uh, if, 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 well, okay. So if the, the device is on the ground, obviously, shoot straight at the target, or it's gonna shoot up and out to the target. Uh, and that's gonna be dependent on each person's device. If it's handheld, pretty much, it could be at the height of whatever person is doing the shooting. Uh, or maybe they've arranged their device handheld where depending on what distance they're trying to make, they may have to squat down or stand up taller. Uh, it doesn't matter as long as they're behind the line. So there's yeah. there's nothing in the rules that specifies uh, a height or anything like that. Maybe it's the ceiling height they're asking. Well, the ceiling height, typically it's a gymnasium, so usually that it, it that has never been a problem. Um, the next question is, do the balls need to be stock or can they be altered 
example weighted? No, no. The, the balls have to be a, a, a traditional uh, ping pong ball. You cannot add weights uh, or alter the ball. It's basically a standard ping pong ball. 40, uh, basically 40 millimeter, I believe, is the dimension. And uh, as I said before, the 40 millimeter, I suspect, is the internal dimension of the ball when they actually uh, inflate the plastic or pour the plastic around whatever mold they're using. So the only the only thing that varies is the thickness of the ping pong ball itself by maybe manufacturer. And that's going to be increment very minor, but it's, the, you know, it is what it is. But that's why I also suggest stress that you uh, check your ball to make sure if you're using some sort of a barrel that the ball actually slides down the barrel easy because we did have the first year balls that basically got stuck and they couldn't shoot any balls after the first one. Uh, they got basically a zero score, unfortunately, which which kind of also indicated that perhaps that was the their their actual shoot day was the first day they tested the device, which which <laughs> uh, means they you know they they basically weren't ready for the for the show. So um, let's see anything. Question, yeah, can kids keep shooting? Or can kids keep their balls in a bucket as they are shooting? Yes. You, uh, normally what we do, we ask them during impound. We we have them put it in a clear, like a baggie or something with the team number on it. That way, when they check in to impound, it's very quick and easy for us to, to verify that they have 15 balls, 10, 4, and 1 uh, right away. So we don't have to kind of fumble around. And because there's a, when at impound, there's a, especially at the beginning of it, there's a ton of people trying to check in, especially if you have 80 teams, for example, it takes us forever. Um, but if the ball is in a clear plastic uh, baggie, it's easier for us to count. We see the numbers there. We set it with the device and then we tell the kids, okay, set it over there in the impound, uh, behind the impound wire and you're off and running. So if, if you can put it in a baggie, that's fine. If they if they wanted to to have a shoebox or something while they're shooting, as long as they impound that shoebox uh, in, in favor of the plastic bag once they're out there, as long as it's impounded with the device, it becomes part of the device then. Do multiple teams shoot at the same time or one team at a time? Nope. All the, when I say go, if we have eight, we'll, we'll tip. If it's a, a regular gymnasium, we usually have room for eight teams. When I say go, there's four minutes uh, times 15 balls times eight. They all shoot at the same time. So there's balls going every which way, which makes it more fun because now you get funny bounces. You get balls bouncing off of bounces or kicking other balls in or out. Uh, which which happens. So yes, short answer is everybody shoots at the same time. Are kids allowed to bring a measuring tape to position themselves to their desired distance? Just to clarify, can the kids shoot from nine meters from the center of bucket, or will that affect their score? It won't affect their score. As long, I mean, if you're shooting from behind, the, you know, farther back than the line we tell you is, say. Uh, for example, if we pick six and a half meters, if they've been practicing with the thing at nine meters, whatever, then that's how their data is based. There's no penalty. And yes, they can have a tape measure as long as they as long as they impound it with the device, then it becomes part of what they require to do their shooting. Does that answer the question? I think that's all of the questions from the chat. So if you asked a question in the chat and I didn't get to it, please just type it again. Are there dates for the district events on the website? I'm thinking maybe I haven't looked yet, uh, but there's typically four district events. Um, and I, uh, I think I might have, I'll have to go back into my emails to see if I received that email because I usually respond that yes, I'll be at all of those events. Uh, okay, uh, website address. Okay. Anybody, any other questions that you see? I don't see. 
Uh, coaches allowed to assist. We got that one. One distance. Height limit. No, no can't be weighted. Uh, they don't have to be, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I think that's pretty much all the questions. Um, again, if, uh, if anyone has any questions after this, please post them online on the, on the uh, uh, Science Olympiad or Macomb County SO.org, uh, and we will get to an answer as quick as possible um, so that everybody has access to those responses. And I would do that on a regular basis right up till a couple of days. If somebody asks a question and you're not sure, you may find up to a couple of days that somebody else has asked the question that you might be of interest to you. So keep checking back and, and make sure you have the latest copy of the rules, which you can get off the website as well. <clears throat>